So I know you've heard me speaking on uh, Manifest Fest 3, and the theme of it is reflection and course correction. Um, but what does that mean? That means looking back and seeing if we got the desired results from the things that we set out to do. Many of you made goals in 2022 that it's perfect time to say, did I do what I set out to do? There's things that worked for me. There's things that worked against me. Let's reflect on that. Let's grow from that observation. And let's make whatever ch changes that we need to make so that we can hit our marks the way that we want to hit our marks. So again, I ask you, are you seeing the, re the desired results? If not, definitely join me for Manifest Fest 3, September the 12th through the 16th. Absolutely free. Five days of access to Manifest University. See, the truth is that we're frequency and we go through life tuning ourselves to different frequencies. And just like the radio, when you tune yourself to a certain frequency, you get what that frequency has to offer you. Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. Welcome to the podcast that's offering you greater. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte. What I aim to do is speak to those who need the small alignments that will lead to the big adjustments, but also speak to those who need that shift. Big shout out to the Mighty and you, everyone from the family and from the tribe that's here. Um, and big shout out to everyone that's in the campus, to everyone that's been joining and being a part of all the expansion that we got going on. It's been a whole lot of growth taking place, and and I'm grateful. I'm absolutely grateful, and and I can tell you this: there's me and a few other people, and we were imagining years ago. You know what I'm saying? Like we were seeing years ago, and we were imagining what we would do when we had a group of people who were all serious about moving forward in their life and, you know, on some greater shall we be, greater shall we do, greater shall we have type vibe. And, and, now, and now we got them and now we got the opportunity to move. And I'm like, I'm sitting back, like, look at, all, look at my people. Look at all my people. They showing up, they, they, they pulling up, because we could do this together. There's so much I got to do, but when my people pull up, woo, hey, we about to show out, we could do this together. You hear what I'm saying? My people here, and I'm putting my people on, I'm teaching my people everything that I've been doing over the past two years since releasing the first book, Manifesting You, 111 Keys to Unlocking Your Divinity. If you don't got that book, you sleeping, you tripping. But, you know, people be sleeping and we be, and sometimes we be tripping, so I'm not judging you. Let me tell you right now, this book right here is in 155 countries right now, changing a whole lot of lives. And, and there's too many people that say that, you know, this put them in a whole nother space of, of existence. The greater existence is the sequel to manifesting you. And if you don't have this book, Listen, your library is not complete. It's actually 111 keys to walking in your infinity. It's how to walk it out. Of, and it's more of the action items that you get from those understandings that you get in manifesting you. I want to give you a key from this, from, from, from the Greater Existence book. And I want to share this with you because it's important that we do this. It's important that we get on the same page where we at doing doing what we're doing and 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 this key not only works right now at this moment but this key will work for you all the time what i want you to do what i want us to do is acknowledge that we've come to this place this moment this intersection of time and space for a divine opportunity to reach a greater level of existence. Can we do that? Can we acknowledge that we've come to this place, this moment, this intersection of time and space for a divine opportunity to reach a greater level of existence? 
If you can do that right now, there's something that you've been waiting for that you're receiving this moment, I can guarantee you. And what I want to tell you is that this is something that you have the ability to do all the time. Matter of fact, the sooner that you incorporate, incorporate this into the way that you move, you're going to turn so much into an opportunity. You're going to turn everything that comes your way into an opportunity. Because you'll acknowledge that you've come to this place, this moment, this intersection of, t- of time and space for a divine opportunity to reach a greater level of existence. Now, of course, to have a divine moment, we want to tap into our divine energy to best participate in this divine opportunity. What do I mean when I say that? I mean the dimensions of our existence, mind, body, soul, and energy. We've spent so much time catering to our mind and pleasing our body that most of us don't do much for our soul and don't pay much attention to our energy until something is wrong. So, what we want to do is pay attention to our soul at this moment. The limitless version of you, the divine version of you, that God state version of you. Not the one that's related to what you went through, what you've been through, where you come from, who did what to you. Not the one that identifies through all these experiences and, uh, and you know, and things like that. Not the one that looks at the flaws. Not the, no, I'm talking about the God in you. It may have been a moment since y'all spoke or since you identified with that version of you, but that's who I'm here to speak to. Healed. Happy. Oh. Is there anyone here that can that can that can tell me that they are not one of those three words? Do you believe that you can be? Okay. What is stopping you? What stands in between your happiness? Your wholeness. Your healing. So let's go to key number 27 from the book, from the Greater Existence book. So we're going to go to, to key number 27, and this one's talking about your mental and emotional stages. Because these stages will either grow or go in circles. Your emotions do not create, your emotions are mere indicators of what you are creating. We often believe that what we are experiencing and what we feel are the same and what we are are the same as they think. We often believe that we are our experiences, that we are our mistakes, that we are where we came from and, and what we went through, and that we are what we are feeling right now. But you're not your sickness. You're not your condition. You're not your weakness. You're not your illness. You're not your mistakes. You're not your encounters. You're not your flaws. You're not your experiences. And if you're suffering from anything in any way, the good news is that suffering is an indication that there is something that you can be doing different to have the desired result because suffering means that you are participating in in whatever is wrong and it's an indication that you just not have not you just have not brought a certain level of consciousness to this situation so I ask you is your life happening consciously or compulsively when we begin to talk about being healed, happy, and whole, is your life and are the things that you're dealing with that are a, a hindrance to you? Are you going through these areas of your life consciously or compulsively? Because the world not happening your way isn't the problem. You not happening your way. 
want to tell you a story. There's this, uh, there's this woman. There's, there's this woman who loved me. And, and more, more than she loved herself. And, and I, and I was a devil at that time, but she seen a God in me. Long before I even seen a glimpse of a God in myself. She spoke of this, this great and this godly version of me. And, and honestly, you know, I dragged her to hell over and over again. She put me first, even, even when I would always put her last. Like, it was crazy. I, treated, I would treat people who, 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 who did nothing for me like they were more valuable than someone who was doing everything for me. Eventually relationship ends uh you know years go by so i started working on myself when i found myself i started looking for her when i started uh when i started understanding what love was it's like i started i started going back and looking for the only person who i can say really loved me Here I was, this new man, like on really on some new shit, like, and she couldn't see it. She couldn't see it. And it wasn't her fault that she couldn't see it. The walls I inspired her to build were so high she she couldn't see it. And, and I could tell, I could tell she was excited to see me. But I could also tell, hearing my voice reminded her of my old lives and it was at that moment that I learned that a rose on time is more valuable than a thousand dollar gift too late some of you have been in this relationship you may have been the me in the story you may have been this woman in the story and some of us have been both and some of us have been both in our own relationship with ourselves happiness is not an accident it's an art and if you want to have a happy relationship with yourself you're going to have to begin to do the things that are good for you. Not engage in self-sabotaging behavior. You're going to have to start making true intention and effort instead of ruining the relationship that you have with yourself. Each time you get an opportunity to make it better. Learn to be happy with what you got while you pursue what you want. What do you want? What does your greater existence look like? Where do you want to be 10 years from now? Because 10 years from now, you will arrive. The only question is where? So where is it that you want to be in 10 years? And I don't mean in your profession. I don't mean in how much you make. And I mean in the relationship that you have within yourself. Where do you, how do you want to feel on the inside in 10 years? How do you like, what type of relationship do you, how do you want to feel about yourself? What type of mentality, what type of feeling, what type of identification, what is it? How do you want to feel in, in 10 years? Many people come up with a, an answer, a good answer. And it's a great point of reference. So let's go right there. So the awesome thing about the work that we're doing is it's inner work. The awesome thing about what we're doing is that it is inner work. Which means there's no distance that must be traveled. There is only a commitment that must be made. Inner peace and healing does not take time takes commitment it's intentional decision making 
to commit it to moving a certain way from here on out. Right? That's what a commitment is. A lot of people think self love is pampering. <laughs> you know what self love is? Self love is if you sitting in this chair right here. And there's another chair with you, next to you. And your mate sitting in that chair next to you. Alright? Same frame. We gonna move your mate away. Some of y'all like that's what it looks like now. Ain't nobody sitting there. And we gonna copy you and put you from this chair and put you in that chair too. Self love looks like you <laughs> taking care of you. You looking out for you. You holding you down. You lifting you up. You holding you accountable. Self-love looks like I'm not going to do things that's not good for me. Self-love looks like I'm not going to let you be mediocre when I know you're amazing. Self-love looks like if we got to stay up late, I'm staying up late with you. That type vibe, right? So, if you want that type vibe with someone else, let me tell you, you're going to have to be having it with yourself first. You know what I'm talking about? You're going to have to you're going to have to be having it with yourself first. No one on this planet will ever be able to meet you at a level that you have not met yourself, but that's not what we're here for. Now. So, stay committed. Stay committed to being a full-fledged being. Like I said, some people go to church, some people go to a bar, some people attempt to conquer the world and, and acquire power, some acquire material things. Everyone's searching for a way to have a greater existence, a greater experience. Everyone is in a pursuit of a greater life, but few are in pursuit of being greater beings. And most of what you're, the, the version of you that is capable of doing what it is that you need to do will come to pass as you continue to pursue to be a greater you and add value to yourself. Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor. What would you say has changed about your household since your wife joined Manifest University? It's a lot more good energy. A lot more light, different conversations, less arguments, more communication, more openness. I love that. Thank you. It's not just a university. We are a tribe and a family. Join Manifest University today to be in my daily calls, my weekly classes, and a part of our 24-7 community. You can go to brianhippolite.com or doumu.com to join Manifest University today. Hey, what's going on, parents? Real quick, I want to talk to you about Parenting with Purpose, our powerful parenting community that is learning and growing 24-7, but we have classes every Tuesday and Thursday night. Parenting with Purpose teaches it's time to stop making excuses and start making changes, and it's our job to speak life into our children, and they deserve a better way, and you deserve a better way. So join us every Tuesday and Thursday to discuss ways to parent with purpose. There's no perfect way to parent, but with the support of a strong tribe, you can learn the tools that help you be the best version of yourself on this parenting journey. So go to doumu.com and join our Parenting with Purpose classes and community. See you there. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast. Being a greater being is what leads to you having a full-fledged life and experience. We can see, we can see it's not the materials. We can see it's not money. We see people with materials and monies blow their fucking heads off. It's not that. It's not the fame. It's not the money. It's the same thing you have to. You know what peace is? 
The word peace comes from the Hebrew word shalom. The word peace comes from the Hebrew word shalom. S-H-A-L-O-M. I have it tattooed on my left foot. In Hebrew. The word peace comes from the Hebrew word shalom. And I, I, I have it in Hebrew letters on my foot. And, and that's because when literally translated from the Hebrew... Shalom means nothing missing, nothing broken. So peace, what you're looking for, what everyone's looking for and searching for, that thing that's within you, that is, that is your natural source, just like the, the oceans are a natural resource of this planet. One of your natural resources is your peace. Is the state of understanding. That nothing is missing and nothing's broken. It's a state of inner standing that nothing's missing and nothing's broken. Anything that you judge to be missing is not supposed to be there. And as soon as you can accept that reality, you can move from that place of truth. If not, you'll continue to find a reason to find yourself victim to these things. That's why it doesn't take time, it takes commitment. It takes commitment to that understanding and not relapsing and falling back into a false mindset, an outdated mindset. It's a new season. Doing old things in a new season is detrimental to your harvest. Ask anyone who's growing anything. So if the agenda is to grow yourself, you must know this. So again, stay committed to being a full-fledged being, and you'll do that by growing yourself to be greater. The, 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 the Greater Resistance Podcast. Peace. Be with you. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Be with you. You've heard this word. Use it all the time. Have an understanding and you'll have that peace. Anything that you would judge to be broken wasn't meant to be together. Or at least not in this time and not in this season. And as long as you can accept that and release that, then you'll have peace in the house. You'll have peace as you go through life. And if you allow your peace to guide you, some of you can't find peace right now because you're still where peace told you it wasn't going to. Peace already told you that's not it. And either left if it came to visit you or it stopped when you got to the door. Because it had probably had already told you that's not it. You heard them say, let your peace guide you. Peace will tell you, your peace will tell you when it's not aligned with something. So when we're talking about alignment, I don't, you know, just in case you don't know what that word means, that is a harmony being attained between your mind, body, soul, and energy, all four components of your existence. Alignment. You've known because your, we'll say your gut feeling, your soul, your consciousness told you where you was, was not somewhere that you needed to be. Soul, not trying to be here. Your mind, trying to justify and finding ways to justify you being in that same place. Mind, soul, two different agendas. Your body on a whole nother other type of time. And your energy exhausted because it don't know where the fuck to go. <laughs> your energy don't sleep. Any, any Anybody feel like they go to sleep but they don't get rest? Anybody feel like they mind is like a computer screen with all those open tabs up? Yeah. You're committed to being we and, and I don't and I'm I'll say we on this because this I, I'm definitely guilty of this. We at these moments we be committed to everything else except for what's best for us and we don't see it. Thinking that all these other things that we deem necessary have to be done. We're trying to work our way into alignment. We were trying to work our way into the results that being in alignment gives us. 
But listen, I'm going to tell you, you can't work your way into alignment. You can't, you can't outwork not being in alignment. It just doesn't, it just doesn't happen. It's much more lucrative to get your mind, body, soul, and energy on, on one accord in one place, moving in one direction, <laughs> and all following the will of your soul. There's dozens of things that make the 80% who do extremely well in life do well, and we'll speak on several of them this evening. One thing I want to get to is philosophy. Because we have to change the way that we think. I'm going to ask you an important question that an important man asked me one day. He said, how much attention to a problem is a decent amount? I think he had a more impeccable word too and it's escaping me at the moment. But because the, the question that he was really asking, the way that he worded it, was how much attention to this problem is too much? How much is the right amount of attention to this problem? Because once we've passed the right amount of attention to this problem, it's too much. And that can have effects that we don't want in our life. That can affect your mental, that can affect your emotional, and that goes back to key number 27. In the book, key number 27 says, the mental and emotional stages will either grow or go in circles. Your mental and emotional stages will either grow or go in circles. Your emotions do not create. Your emotions are merely indicators of what you are creating. Of all the creatures, we're the only ones, humans, we're the only ones who suffer from the things that we create. All the other creatures, every other living thing has only suffers from other things that are real in its nature. We're the only ones who suffer from the things that we create within our minds. Many suffer from being on this spiritual journey using mental and emotional navigation. That's not going to get you where you need to go or where you need to be. Who can admit that you've been on this journey? Even if you're just now starting to understand that it's a spiritual journey. And a spiritual journey just means it's more than, it's more than physical means that you are created to something divine and if you're not created to your divinity to your infinity then you're identifying with your finite your limited your limitation your humanity and you're going to experience all of the things that your humanity can suffer from Listening to him to your humanity, you don't even want to identify with things. The more things you identify, the more things you stand up to get hurt by. Whatever you identify, I don't even gotta attack you. I can all I gotta do is attack somebody who identify with whatever you identify with. You gonna feel attacked. Your identities are limitations. All the great minds, all the great been finding a way to fall back from these identities that we create and that we identify with and see themselves as the energy that is used to motorize and power the will of the soul instead of allowing their emotions and their mental state to navigate them through life so have an open mind because have a, have a mind that is open and a mind that is attached to nothing. Open to everything and attached to nothing. You got to have an open mind because a closed mouth doesn't get fed. A closed mind doesn't get fed either. So let's get back to talking about this small alignments 
or these major adjustments. Some people are here for small alignments. Some people are here to make a shift. Some need a whole new culture. Some people have been a part of a culture that is no longer benefiting. They're no longer aligned with it. And they need a whole new way of living, it seems. A whole new way of thinking. So let's talk about that philosophy. Outweigh your problems. You grow yourself to be bigger than your problems. You want to get whatever stage of life that you want to get to. You won't get there. Until you're able to handle the problems of every level between you and that place that you want to go. So if you're struggling with the problems at this level, at this level, you're not going to be able to ascend to that level where you want to be until you can handle the problems where you're at. And I'll know and you'll know that you can handle the problems at this level because you won't be at this level no more. You know what happens when you can defeat everything in the level and nothing in this level is a problem to you. You level up. You learn this as a kid. This ain't nothing new. So outweigh your problems. Outgrow your problems. Because listen, if you at a level five and you haven't got the level six, level five problems are obviously a problem for you. So you double up and you become the version of yourself that can deal with those level five problems. And guess who we are now? That level six version of you. You got to have that mindset to outweigh your problems. I'm going to twist these words around and throw them back at you, though. I want you to also weigh out your problems. Weigh out your problems. Don't give major attention to minor problems. You want to live happy? (laughs) You want peace in your life? (laughs) Don't give major attention to minor problems and vice versa. Don't give minor attention. A lot of people suffering for some shit right now because in another season, they gave minor attention to a major problem or to what had potential to be a major problem. So you got to weigh out your problem so that you are giving it the adequate amount of attention. Without this, you're mentally handicapped. Without this, you are mentally handicapped. Around every turn, there's going to be something that can <laughs> throw your whole shit off. So weigh out your problems. The next thing that we got to get to in your philosophy is your outdated mindsets. Outdated mindsets is what keeps us in poor shape, poor health, poor pockets, poor cycles, poor circles, poor pathways, poor mentalities. You're going to have to let some mindsets go. Some of those mindsets are going to have to include this victim mindset. This addiction to victimhood. You'll know when you're able to no longer be the victim in your story. When it, when you no longer have a bad guy in your story. When you can tell your story without having to make somebody else the bad guy. And therefore having to victimize yourself. That's when you'll know. Someone said, how will I know when I'm healed? When you no longer feel the need to tell people you why you were hurt. Or that you were hurt. You'll know. But it doesn't take time, it takes commitment. There's some things you need to accept, there's some things you need to release. There's some things you need to abandon. There's some things you need to make your new normal. The the, the Greater Resistance Podcast. And you know what they are. 
you've known what they are. That's why you know the only one that was standing in between you and your peace or you and your happiness was you. Because things are these things are within you. You couldn't tell me, you couldn't tell me the truth and tell me that it was something or somebody else that was holding on to your peace unless you unless you left it there. So stop thinking thoughts that you can't afford to keep thinking. Can you, and it's an honest question, can you afford to keep thinking the way that you've been thinking? Can you afford for your mind to continue to play those horror movies? Can you afford to allow your mind to make you, to allow you to miss great opportunities because you produce fear instead of faith? Can you afford to keep thinking the way that you think? Can you afford to keep applying fear around every corner when it comes to your children? Isn't that stressful? Can you afford to keep thinking the way that you're thinking? And there's plenty of uh, plenty of other examples other than the f- some fearing that something's gonna happen with your children, and so you living in a constant state of of fear. Let me tell you something about fear. Fear is meant to inspire you to do something. It's meant to inspire you into action. It's meant to inspire you to become a version of you or equip yourself in a way that you don't have to fear that thing that you fear. But you have a choice, just like everything else in nature. If you react with faith or you react with fear, if you do fight or flight, you know, when a lion roars, there are two reactions that animals have. Some of them haul ass. They haul ass and they get in the fuck out there, right? Some other animals stay paralyzed, immobilized by their fear. Right? Here's the thing, though. A lion's roar can be heard for miles. There are animals who still, the this, this threat's not even near them, and they still getting scared, and they still getting paralyzed. And as funny as that may sound, as adults, we do the same thing. Creating fears in our mind, or having distant fears and allowing it to immobilize us in our now, and not do things that we should do in our now to create the realities that we desire. Because we're scared of something That's not Most fears do not happen Most of the things that you've ever feared in your life Did not happen So why do you still allow Fear to rule your life To limit your decision making You're going to have to decide To turn on faith Every time you come across fear You turn on faith You're going to have to decide to do that and this is why I'm telling you, don't take time. It takes commitment because once you commit to this, yo, once you commit to this, it's just like you know how to be in a committed relationship, right? You know what that means, right? That means all other options are null and void. That doesn't mean tomorrow if I feel like it or if tomorrow if things go my way. That means I'm committed to this, right? If you can have that same type of relationship with you, which you should have, we talking about self-love and we talking about self-care. Let's get ourselves out of survival mode. Let's get away from the excuses that we create for the way that we operate because we're in survival mode. Let's get ourselves out of survival mode. It's a commitment. There's not really much of a transition that happens between survival mode and thriving mode. Listen, I can tell you about bondage, okay? I can tell you all about bondage and I really talk about it. I could tell you about bondage and I could tell you about freedom and I could tell you the difference between them is knowledge and how you apply it in your life. Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast. Hey, what's up, parents? I want to make sure that you know about Manifest Academy. Sign your young scholars up today, pre-K 
through fifth grade, and it is on an app, it's on the tablet, it's on the phone, it's on the computer. It's everything that you need to keep your child learning and growing and enjoying it. For fundamental learning, to support their academics, problem solving, growing their vocabulary, effective communication, manners, creation, development. is so many amazing things. Over 100 hours of learning videos and downloadable worksheets, interactive games. We even get the kids together from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday, for after school learning in group activities. 30 days free, your first 30 days free at Manifest Academy. You just sign your young genius up at malearningplay.com. We'll see you in your amazing seeds at Manifest Academy. Let's learn and grow and play together at malearningplay.com. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast. It's time to think about what you think about. Be more conscious with your thoughts. Because where your focus goes, your energy flows. And that's what grows. Right? That's what grows. So, think about this. Things are growing in your life. How often do you tend to your guard? You got things growing in your mind. Things have been growing in your mind. That are not a part of what's great for you. That's not a part of the fruits of your mind. The harvest of your mind. The abundance of your mind. So all these other thoughts are weeds in your garden. These are thoughts that have came your way. From things that people have told you. Lies you have told yourself. Ideas you have created. Weeds growing in your mind. That's why you got to uproot them. Matter of fact, the best time to check a negative thought and to deal with a negative thought is this moment it enters your mind. The moment it enters your mind, that's when you deal with that negative thought. That negative thought. And let me tell you a secret, family. You don't deal with a negative thought with a positive thought. You can't fight a thought with a thought. You have to fight a thought with your words. You have to fight a thought with your action. The first thing you need to do is audibly speak. Audibly speak whatever cancels out that thought. Powerfully. Affirmatively. Over and over and over again. Because your mind believes what you tell it. You have a subconscious that a grab onto those weeds. But your mind gonna believe what you tell it. If you take the initiative and the intention to steer it. Or have it submit to your divine consciousness. So, listen. I'm so excited that you did and I And I pray this is making sense to you. We got to uproot these weeds. You wouldn't let somebody with their shoes on run across your bed, would you? Somebody with their dirty shoes from outside run across your bed. No, you wouldn't. So why you keep letting people run through your mind with their dirty feet? You gotta uproot some things. You gotta uproot some things. Cause you know what weeds do, right? They they gravitate towards the things that have nutrients. Weeds don't have their own, so they're gonna gravitate towards the things that have nutrients, and they're going to the, 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 the squeeze, greater resistance that nutrients out. Of Something that had potential to grow, potential to harvest, potential to give you a desired result's not going to. Because you allow these weeds to grow in your life. Because you have not tended to your garden. What is it that you've been thinking that is not directing your thoughts where it needs to be? That is stopping you from aligning with who you need to be. 
We say a lot of affirmations here at Manifest University. By the way, if you're not a part of Manifest University, listen, you can join, you can join and be in the community absolutely free now. And I'm so excited to say that. I'm so excited to say that, that you can join and be in the community absolutely free. There's daily classes all throughout the week, a.m. and p.m. classes all throughout the week. Those to access to the classes start at just a dollar a day. There's different levels depending on what classes you want and all and, and all that stuff. But it starts at just a dollar a day to be in these daily calls. But we say a lot of affirmations in the morning. And I remember someone telling me that there was they were stuck at one particular af- at a group of affirmations because a part of them wasn't aligning with them and it was a, a check in them that was like. When I say that, I don't, I don't feel that that's true, and I don't feel that like that. I'm like that, and I was like, "That's a great, in- that's awesome, that's awesome, that's a great indication, that's a great of an indication." And you follow that indicator to its root. Follow that into its root, and you're gonna find a weed that's been growing in the field of your mind, something that wasn't true to begin with. That might have been planted there in your childhood. Might have been planted there through an experience. Might have been a defense mechanism. Might have been a coping mechanism. It, it was, it's was. it been there though. Follow, follow the reason why when we said I am. And then said a powerful affirmation. A piece of you. Mm, one with it. This will change your life. This will change your life. This will change your legacy. Stop playing. Stop playing. If you're here at this moment, at this divine time, I know, I know for a fact that this is a divine moment for you to have a greater existence. And it's not just for you. It's not even just for your family. It's for your divine purpose. That's so much greater than anything that you even know or believe. You have a greater purpose and a greater reason to be On this planet at this time In this space Right now Then you knowing that that you believe So let's keep moving on Things that we can do to keep building up That greater version of you You did what I'm saying let's get to it Let's talk about activities Let's talk about what activities Because so many of you Said that you wanted happiness And I know a lot from the one-on-one calls that I do When I get to ask you Well, what are you doing? Many aren't reporting that they're doing things that make them happy That's the number one thing You want happiness You're going to have to be doing some things that make you happy Somebody going to tell me that Their job is something that doesn't make them happy But that's what they have to do You have other uh, other hours But even if you wanted to go there Then hey Now we know what we need to start shifting Some people said they was here for alignment Some people said they here for a shift So you might be here for a shift Are you capable of becoming the version of you That can pull that off That's the only conversation that we have Let's talk about it Let's talk about the activities you want to be happy. You want to identify with your happiness because we go. Let's 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 be real. Let's stop saying it wrong. Let's not say be happy because you are happy. You just choose to not identify with it. I did this the other day with my daughter, and uh, she was having she was she was having. Listen, don't. There's two type of people that lose their mind. Okay. <laughs> there's two type of people on this planet that lose their mind. Somebody who's losing control over another human being's mind And a five-year-old being told it's nap time Those are the two people that lose their fucking mind the most You hear what I'm saying? And my five-year-old was being told that it was time to rest and reset That's what we call it We don't even call it nap time We call it reset that's what, that's what you need. You acting like it right now. You need to reset. <laughs> it 
was time to reset. She was, she was, she was, she was, she was not having a good time. I take that back. I'm about to say it wrong. I'm about to say it wrong. We were learning, homeschooling, and she kept getting a problem wrong. I put my hands out like this. Said, look, this is happiness. This is sadness. You know what I'm saying? And I'm in front of her. I'm like, look, this is happiness. This is sadness. You got to pick which one you want. Which one do you want? It's up to you. You got to pick which one you want. Happiness or sadness? She's like, moving really slow. No, no, no. You got to make a decision. You got to make this. This is I'm giving you a parenting with purpose lesson at the same time. You got to make a decision. Do you want happiness or sadness? She touches the happiness hand, like with one hand. No, no, no. You're not gonna be able to have happiness if you just gonna touch it. You gonna have, you gonna have your happiness gonna move. I move my hand away. So I'm asking you again. Do you want happiness? And we did this until she grabbed my hand. Okay. Cause. Cause that means you're gonna hold on to happiness. You're gonna have to decide to hold on to happiness. If this is what you want, if you want happiness, nothing will take it from you. No one can keep it from you if you wanna hold on to it. And that lesson that I taught my five year old is something that will change a lot of our lives. That's not something that has anything to do with age. We have to know that if we want happiness in our lives, oftentimes that means we're going to have to hold on to it because there's going to be some things that's going to try to pull our happiness in different directions. There's going to be some things based off of the meanings that we associate with our lives and the judgments that we have for certain things is going to be some things that might make you unhappy in life, but that doesn't mean you have to be unhappy. See, joy is a natural resource, just like peace is a natural resource. It comes from within you. The, the, the greater resistance. And the more podcast. that you know that, the more that you understand it does not matter what happens around you. That doesn't have to dictate what happens in you. I was in my, you know, I'm 37 now. I was definitely in my 30s. Well, within my 30s when I began to understand it. That just because it happened around me didn't mean that it had to happen in me. And that I had the ability to observe something and not absorb things. These things will change your life if you let them. Again, I know some people are here for an alignment and other people are getting a shift right now. Activity. Do more of what you love. You're talking about you want to be happy. Do more of what you love. You want to live a life full of happiness? Do more of what you love. Name 10 things that make you happy. And do two or three of them a day. Come back in 30 days and tell me if you're not experiencing more happiness in your life. More things that allow you to have joy, to express joy. Listen, there's a difference between having happiness and expressing it. Make a commitment to be the expression of joy in your life. What does your joy look like? What does joy look like for you? Make a commitment to be an expression of joy in your life and in the lives around you. My seven-year-old Samara, by the way, she she just released her first book, Samara Loves Her Locks. It's available. It's available at BrianHibberlight.com. I'll tell you that. It's teaching authenticity, man. It's a it's a it's a beautiful book. She wrote it when she was six. When she was six, when she was turning six, my five-year-old turning six told me that for her birthday she wanted bath bombs and she wanted a dot com. She was she seen daddy moving his books and doing his thing from BrianHippolite.com. And she said, Well, when do I get SamaraHippolite.com? I'm trying to join the family business. And I said, okay. So we start creating products. She got affirmations, the children affirmation, the audio that's on all, streaming on all uh, audio services and audio platforms. Um, and now she and now she got this book, and, and and we built products, and we built her knowledge and her awareness and for her understanding. And a year later, she got her dot com, Leilani Samara dot com. She got her 
her, her YouTube um, series, and she got her product and and made a, a and, all, and we're building a platform for her to be able to uh, to teach and impact in her age group called Manifest Academy. So that's something that's going to be around in, a, in in just a few weeks. I said all that to say, do more of what you love. Do more of what you love. We looked around and said, what do we love to do? And we find ways to do it. I love helping my daughters. I love being with my children. I love learning. I love creating new products. I love creating, period. I go and do the things that I love. I surround myself and my life with the things that I love. And I teach my children to do the same. What do you love to do, baby? She loves science. Let's go through a bunch of science stuff. That's what she wants to teach. She wants to make teach science to other kids her age. Do things and teach them about life through it. Come on, let's do it. Name 10 things that bring you joy. That's your expression. Help you express joy. And do two or three of them a day. Back to Samara. Actually, the reason that I brought up Samara is because her birthday is in May. And her last birthday, she said one of the wishes that she wished on her birthday. On her birthday, she's blowing out the candles. One of the things that come through her mind that she wants for her birthday wish is to see her father smile The fuck have I been doing? Teaching everyone else about happiness. Teaching everyone else about joy. Having it. But apparently not expressing it. And then it started to make sense when when she would ask me, Daddy, are you happy? I'm happy. What are you talking about? <laughs> First of all, I'm always happy when I'm with you, baby. But she wasn't seeing the expression of happiness. She wasn't. And I made a commitment that day, that moment, to start being an expression of happiness that my children could see. Because it made no sense. For me to be showing other people's children, that's y'all, how to be happy and identifying with their happiness. And my children weren't seeing it from me. Nah, we ain't doing that. We ain't going out like that. We ain't going out like that. Doumu.com. Is the link if to, to, to the website to go to if you want to join Manifest University so you can be in my daily calls and my weekly classes, be in my community and get uh, affirmations and information, empowerment, encouragement from me all throughout the day. So it's, it's me on the app, y'all. I'm loving it. Big shout out to Manifest University, my team, my family, my tribe. That's another thing. You want to be happy? Get around people who are happy. (laughs) Get around people who want you to be happy. Get around people who want more of you, not more from you. Get around people who are supporting your betterment because they're not attached and aligned to your limitations. You want to do great? You want to do better? You're going to have to let go. Of some of these trauma bonds. Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor. What would you say has changed about your household since your wife joined Manifest University? It's a lot more good energy, a lot more light, different conversations, less arguments, more communication, more openness. I love that. Thank you. It's not just a university. We are a tribe and a family. Join Manifest University today to be in my daily calls, my weekly classes, and a part of our 24-7 community. You can go to brianhippolite.com or doumu.com to join Manifest University today. 
Hey, what's going on, parents? Real quick, I want to talk to you about Parenting with Purpose, our powerful parenting community that is learning and growing 24-7, but we have classes every Tuesday and Thursday night. Parenting with Purpose teaches it's time to stop making excuses and start making changes. And it's our job to speak life into our children, and they deserve a better way, and you deserve a better way. So join us every Tuesday and Thursday to discuss ways to parent with purpose. There's no perfect way to parent, but with the support of a strong tribe, you can learn the tools that help you be the best version of yourself on this parenting journey. So go to doumu.com and join our Parenting with Purpose classes and community. See you there. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast. Again, you want to be happy? Let's do two or three things that make you happy, right? Identify 10 of them, do two or three of them a day. Y'all, I'm intentional, highly intentional. You, and if you want to apply a high level of intention to your life, you can achieve some amazing things. Before I'm empowering, you know, I'm empowering Manifest University at 7 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Before I empower anyone else, I've, I've empowered myself. Before, before my lady needs me, before my children needs me, before the world gets me, you better know I've given love to myself. Everyone else is getting the overflow. There's a lot, it's too many times, for too many years we've gone through life, giving everyone our last, no, no more, you give from your overflow, so what do we need to do so that you can give to you, the way you need to be given, so that you can give from your overflow, let's start having that conversation instead of talking about what's wrong with you. Instead of talking about the unique defectiveness that you identify with. Because we all do, and I don't mean that to disrespect any of anything that you've encountered. But listen, I've been all across this country talking to people in the last two years. All who came to me believing that if they told me their unique problem, and if they could explain it, Everyone has a story, right? They could explain it. The better that they could explain it and the more details they could give me about it, the better answer I could give them. And I'm going to tell you the truth. Many of those conversations, I knew what they needed to know before I got on the plane to see them. Before I got on the Zoom to have the one-on-one with them. Before I showed up to do the podcast or the TISA class or whatever. Because it's all the same thing. Your story is so insignificant when it comes to your divinity. And the sooner I can get you to see that, the sooner I can get you to understand that, the sooner it's going to show in your life. Do you, M U? Do you manifest you? Do you, M U dot com. Join the clip, join the tribe, join the family. You can join the campus absolutely free right now. There's no reason why you should not at least be tapped in to the community. When you ready to take the classes, upgrade your membership. But there's daily calls like this happening in the AM and the PM at Manifest University that are going to empower you in the ways that will lead you to, to having a greater resistance. That's what it's all about. We're here to break generational curses and create generational wealth. If that ain't the type of time you want, this ain't going to be your party. But I know, I know for a fact, because I know what the law of attraction moves like that there's some people in here that know that it's up to them to change the direction of their family tree it's up to them some of us are the last i'm the last i'm one of the last tree on this of this particular lineage of mine man like ain't nobody else gonna do it if i don't do it but it's not about what anyone else would do or could do. It's about what I was meant to do, and I'm here for it. If you can identify with that, if you can identify with the fact that you're going to break generational curses just because you're going to parent differently, you're going to break generational curses just because you're going to not self-sabotage 
your relationship with yourself and the other relationships that you have. You're going to break generational curses because you're not going to be controlled by your lower self. You're going to break generational curses because you're going to teach awareness to abundance and not financial poverty. You're going to, you know what I'm saying? Like, you understand it's you. If you here right now when you didn't know, it's you. Hey, what's up? I'm Brian Hippolyte, the Manifest Mentor. Six-time author, founder of Manifest University, uh, homeschool father, and, and I do a bunch of other cool shit. But I'm, but I'm here to tell you at this moment, I'm that person that gets to tell you that greater shall you be, greater shall you do, and greater shall you have. And it's you that gets to break the generational curses and create generational wealth and change. What your last name stand for. If you want that type of time on that type of mission, I'm with you. You in the right place. And I got a lot of people with me, so you really in the right place. So let's talk about this other key part. Lifestyle. What are your goals? What are your habits? And do your habits support your goals? What are your goals? What are your habits? And do your habits support your goals? Take a moment, write that down, think about that process there. Because in a lot of those one-on-ones that I have with people, after they tell this whole story, the habits or the mindset behind it isn't aligned with the goal. The vibration that they offer isn't aligned with the desired result. That's like someone who wants peace but's not bringing peace to the party, peace to the conversation. You want it to de escalate, but you're escalating it in behavior. You cannot create or have anything outside of vibration that you offer so if you want greatness if you want greater for your life you're going to have to become that greater vibration that doesn't always have to happen by you creating all these other things when we talk about creating the reality that you desire it's common that people get the thought in your mind that that means there's all these other things that must come creating the reality that you desire is eliminating Eliminating all the things in your reality that you don't desire and that don't lead to the beneficial desired result. It's so much about taking away that it is adding to. And once you take away, you'll get to peace, wholeness, happiness, a place of nothing missing, nothing broken. When you're no longer holding things that you shouldn't even be holding any longer, you'll realize that you was whole the whole time. When you get to the other side of the story that you told yourself why you're broken, you'll realize you've been whole the whole time, identifying as a broken being. That's why I ask you, can you afford to keep thinking the way that you've been thinking or do you need to change your thinking? What are your goals? What are your habits? And do your habits support your goals? What impact do you want to make? What impact do you want to make? You want to make a lasting impact? You want to make a lasting impression? Help people from your heart since that's where your passion resides. And you will find yourself surrounded by happiness. I love what I do. Surrounded by happiness. I love being able to help people identify with their greatness and their God state. And move in the power that is connected to them. I love it. Big shout out to Manifest University. Again, if you have not already joined my community and you're not a part of this Go to doumu.com to join Manifest University. 
So you can be in my daily calls, my weekly classes. There's now an app that you can download called Mighty Networks. And on that app, you're going to be able to put in Manifest University and be connected with inspiration and empowerment from me all throughout the day. And it's even going to notify you when I'm going live to do classes just like this. And it's even going to let you know when those recordings of those classes are available and you can go back to them. You can also view a library of um, empowering things that inspire me and that help me to grow. You, it's, it's so much going on, but you also have this supportive community that allows you to be that greatest version of yourself. That's a, that's a, that's a big part of what we were talking about is getting around people who want to see you grow. All right? So do you mu.com. Back to what I was talking about, though. Lifestyle. Do your habits support your goals? What impact do you want to make? How and who do you want to help? How are you helping? For those who are still talking about healing, that they need healing, that they need better self-control. I want to give you four healing agents that you can use to recognize your holders and empower your holders. Should I say? Number one is mindset. Decide what energy you will send forth and become it. It's that simple. You got to decide who and what you are. Decide what energy you will send forth and become it. You with me so far? It's too heavy for you? If I'm speaking above your head, then I'm speaking where your head should be. Set your attentions on how you will experience life and see how. Life will respond to you when you begin to respond to life instead of reacting to life. Are you living consciously or compulsively? Are you responding to life or reacting to life? Are you have many people, and this is with no judgment, this is an all love, because many people have gone through life only knowing to live a life in reaction to what happens to them. So mindset is what it's all about. Be determined to allow no one to control your energy. Be determined to heal your life. Now, whatever that you're dealing with, be determined that you will be greater than that. And that you don't have to move because of that. Anything that's yours can't be you. Your emotions can't be you. Your sickness can't be you. Whatever disposition you can come up with, it can't be you. So stop trying to wear a mask as if it's you. You try to create this mask, this victimized version of you. And you wear that mask. You know, the word mask is uh, the Latin word. The word mask derives from the Latin word uh, persona. A long time ago... Plays were often done by one or two people or three people, but they all did a whole bunch of parts at the same time. And they would wear a persona, a mask, to be that character, each character. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You've seen it in movies, you've seen it articulated in theater, articulating old school theater. Some of you know what I'm talking about. They wore different masks to be different characters, right? These masks were called personas. Now, what do you think happens? You wear this mask long enough. Well, you forget that it's a mask. You believe that you are the... You stop believing you're the person behind the mask. And you believe that you are the person that the mask identifies. Wow. It's almost as if this character has come to life this persona what do you think happens to a persona when it grows up do you know what we what you call a grown up persona anybody when a persona grows up it is called a personal lati personality this is now your personality 
who you believe you are, you move accordingly, you feel the things that this personality wants to feel. Wow. But that's not you. If you identify and believe in a limited version of you, you will empower your limitations. You'll empower your limitations. If you will, if you agree and identify with a limitless version of you, you will see and do the things that empower your limitless ability. So be determined to see that. Be determined to not allow anyone else to control your energy. If I was to, to control what you did on a daily basis, if I was to control what you did on a daily basis, you would call it slavery. If I was to tell you how to think, what to do, how to move, how to feel, invalidate your own feelings, give you other feelings to feel. If I was to do that to you, you would call it slavery. What do you call it then when you do it to yourself? When you're the slave master and the slave. When you're not even in control of how you're you're acting as if you're not in control. So you're allowing other things in your mind to be in control of how you feel and what you think and what you do. Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor. Hey, what's up, parents? I want to make sure that you know about Manifest Academy. Sign your young scholars up today, pre-K through fifth grade. And it is on an app. It's on the tablet. It's on the phone. It's on the computer. It's everything that you need to keep your child learning and growing and enjoying it. For fundamental learning to support their academics, problem solving, growing their vocabulary, effective communication, manners, creation, Development is so many amazing things. Over a hundred hours of learning videos and downloadable worksheets, interactive games, and we even get the kids together from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday, for after school learning and group activities. 30 days free, your first 30 days free at Manifest Academy. You just sign your young genius up at malearningplay.com. We'll see you in your amazing seeds at Manifest Academy. Let's learn and grow and play together at malearningplay.com. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast. It's time to get out. It's time to set yourself free from mental slavery. It's time to set yourself free from those shackles you put on your mind, from the identity that you force yourself into believing. Acceptance, some things you got to accept, some things you got to release, accept what you cannot control, accept others and don't try to change them. You have no right to put our will on other people's lives. Although we see this is a better version of life for you and I want this for you, you cannot be in control of that and you'll suffer if you don't let that go. Forgiveness. Forgiveness, practice forgiveness. Because this changes the energy in your body. This changes, this allows your body to radiate healing energy. This re- release judgment and blame of others. Forgive yourself and move on. Many of you said that you wanted healing. You wanted peace. You wanted to be whole. It's all right here. Most of what needed to be done was right here. And I apologize if I took you a whole lot of ways to bring you right here. But I trust that it was all to divinely lead you to this moment. You got to let some things go. You got to release some grudges. You got to release some blame that you had. Whether it be for other people to whether it be for yourself. You have to forgive yourself and you have to move on. The best thing I ever did was one, ask myself, why are you the way that you are and do the things that you do? Second best thing I ever did was look in the mirror and say, I forgive you. I forgive you, bro. I forgive you. Bro. 
Healing doesn't take time, it takes commitment. Truth isn't something you need to accept, it's something you yield to. You don't gotta accept the truth, you just need to stop there. You just need to yield to it. If you're suffering in any way, it's an indication that you have not brought a higher level of consciousness, a high enough level of consciousness to your situation. If you want more, if you want to learn some more of how to be the thermostat and not the temperature, I invite you to join Manifest University. If you're, if you're not in my daily calls, my weekly classes, go to doumu.com and sign up. If you're in the community and you're just getting, you know, my posts and stuff like that and you just want to wait for the next free class, God bless you. For those who want more of this alignment and want more of what's going to allow you to shift some things in your life, don't take this opportunity for granted to be a part of something that's going to grow you. Classes start at just a dollar a day. We spend so much more on things that offer us so much less. Take your advancement, your empowerment, your development serious. You invest in everything and everything and everyone else before you invest in your betterment. And that's a flawed system and a mindset of lack that we were taught. There was people in your life that should have told you different. We're not judging them. I'm here now. You here now. We're getting what we need to get. We have so many people that have vouched for the abundance that has came into their life since they joined Manifest University. It's not just me. It's not just what I'm doing. It's people getting this knowledge and applying it. Taking these understandings and turning them into overstandings and applying it. What's up? You ready to get it? You ready to ex- uh, get to your, get to your next level of life? Or you want to keep going through the same system and the same cycle of things that have not served you well or the people ahead of you well? I really want to invite you to join the Greater Resistance Course. Because when you join the Greater Resistance Course, you get all of my books. Manifesting you, teach them young, the greater existence. You even get my first children's book, my daughter's first book, Samar Loves Her Locks. You get all these books, the paperback versions, the e-books. You also get my 36 class Manifesting You course, complete with a purpose-finding assessment and self-identification assessment where many people come back and say, listen, this shit changed my life because it made me ask myself questions I had never asked myself before. And and getting and asking that question led to that a uh, divine answer. That divine answer gave me divine clarity. That divine clarity gave me divine direction. And now I know what I need to do. I want that for you. The Greater Resistance Course is $99 for the next 99 people. Don't miss it. It's over twelve hundred dollars of material, and that's available at BrianHippolite.com. We say we 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 doing some powerful things over here at Manifest University. Big shout out to the mighty MU and all of the MU professors, and many of them. I've seen y'all faces throughout the broadcast and in different spaces, and everyone that's been showing up and showing out, and that is a living example of everything that I'm representing, everything that I'm doing with Manifest University. Coming in one way, moving into another space, and then from there, overflow. I've seen people come in identifying as broken, who now identify as whole. I've seen people come in who had fears, who now have faith. I've seen people come in that was stressed out, giving everything that they had to everyone else except themselves, and we told them how to turn that around, so now they're just giving out of their overflow, and it's beautiful. You are a divine being when you are loved properly. I wish you would love yourself more. I wish you would love yourself better. I wish you would get your, be intentional and get yourself around some people who is going to love you better because you will do some amazing things when you get out of survival mode. 
you will do some amazing things when you stop limiting to your, yourself to the people who want to see you limited you're going to do some amazing things when you tap into the divine version of you instead of the human version of you some of you are some amazing beings but your divine being is something that you have not even tapped into yet you still living through your humanity and not your infinity you see the limitations instead, instead of the abundance within you I pray this evening allows you to see and feel a little bit differently. And as we come to a close again, I invite you to join. I invite you to join Manifest University or go to BrianHippolite.com. If you're not ready to join Manifest University for the monthly subscription, then join the Greater Existence course for $99 and get four months access to Manifest University. As well as these books that's going to empower you, that's going to change you. It's all available at BrianHippolite.com. Take your life and your legacy to the next level. When you say you want to feel good, what you are saying is that you want to feel God. And God is within you. Good is within you. Great is within you. So let's do more of the things that focus on our wholeness. Because all of your struggles, all your illnesses, all your scarcities in life came because we have disconnected ourselves from a field of intention that operates from wholeness. You hear what I'm saying? A field of intention that operates from wholeness. So let's stay there. Let's stay at that place. I love y'all to life. I wouldn't water you if I didn't want you to grow. I look forward to you getting the books, joining the course, joining the community, and getting to the other side of whatever's been standing in your way. Again, I didn't tell you anything that you didn't already know. I can't, I can't speak to the God anymore. I just don't want you to leave here the same way that you came. That's what I'm committed to. And if there's anyone that's committed to that, if there's anyone that's committed to that, that can't say that they they felt something that inspired them to be different, move different, then then, then tell me what 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 you what you missing, what's what's in your way? What's in your way? From you having wholeness, from you identifying with your wholeness. What's in the way from you being happy with you identifying the joy that's within you? What's in your way from your heal version of you? Nothing. Nothing except what you identify as and what you believe. And you know what I believe? I believe greater shall you be. Greater shall you do, and greater shall you have. Do you disagree? And it's a real question. I've, I've been around people who really disagree. Not necessarily in their mind, but in their actions, in their core beliefs. They disagree if they really believe. That greater was available to them and that greater was there for them. They would be experiencing them that greater. They would be connecting themselves to that greater. They would be enjoying it and being engulfed in that greater. Before, unfortunately, many people believe that life is supposed to be hard. Things are supposed to be challenging. People will always let them down. There's people who continuously believe that they won't have greater. So they limit their ability to have it around every turn. Now's the day to choose you. Now's the day to choose your life. And the right tools make every job easier. So that's why I'm offering you these tools. Because the right tools make any job easier. When you're talking about personal development, self-mastery, goal execution, emotional intelligence, successful living, I'm going to consistently give you those tools. Not only myself, but the Manifest University professors are going to consistently give you those tools. 
and our amazing community is going to empower you day after day to use those tools collectively. I appreciate you tuning in to this broadcast, and I wish you, yours, a wonderful and prosperous evening. I love you to life. It's Brian Hippolyte, the Manifest Mentor. Be great, be powerful, be God's. I'll see you soon. I'm forever grateful. I'm forever thankful. As I walk through life, may my stride be graceful. As I see the blessings hidden in every message. As I live and I learn, grateful for every lesson. I am peace, I am love. I am joy, I am light. Each day I give gratitude for my life. I am forever grateful. I am forever thankful. As I walk through life, may my stride be graceful. I trust that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. And receiving what I'm supposed to be getting at this moment. When I am in a state of appreciation, I align with my higher self. I attract positive things to me. Gratitude is a superpower. Gratitude clears the path for my manifestation. So every day I show appreciation. Gratitude for what I have. And gratitude for what is to come. I'm forever grateful. I'm forever thankful. As I walk through life, may my stride be graceful. As I see the blessings hidden in every message. As I live and I learn, grateful for every lesson. I am peace, I am love, I am joy, I am light, each day I give, gratitude for my life, I am forever grateful, I am forever thankful, as I walk through life, may my stride be graceful, I am grateful for what I have, and I am excited for what is to come, I am grateful for the new day. Excited for the rising sun. I'm thankful for the light of this day, for renewed energy and renewed strength. I am eternally grateful for the love I am capable of giving and for the love that I receive. Most of all, I am grateful for the love within me. Thanksgiving is perpetual, so it survives every obstacle I'm stepping through. I'm forever grateful, I'm forever thankful. As I walk through life, may my stride be graceful. As I see the blessings hidden in every message. As I live and I learn, grateful for every lesson. I am peace, I am love, I am joy, I am light. Each day I give gratitude for my life. I'm forever grateful. I'm forever thankful. As I walk through life, may my stride be graceful. Whatever has happened, whatever will happen, I can be certain that I will be grateful. Because I am aware that each moment has something great to offer me. I am grateful now in this moment and it's keeping doors of blessing open to me. Even devastation is an opportunity for transformation. My gratitude ascends with my elevation. I welcome all the ways the universe wants to bless me. I reject and release all the things that try to stress me. If I approach each situation 
experience in person with appreciation. I will be held in the arms of abundance and sitting in the lap of patience. I'm forever grateful. I'm forever thankful. As I walk through life, may my stride be graceful. As I see the blessings hidden in every message. As I live and I learn, grateful for every lesson. I am peace, I am love. I am joy, I am light. Each day I give gratitude for my life. I am forever grateful. I am forever thankful. As I walk through life, may my stride be graceful. Whatever I see, I trust that the universe is supporting me. I choose to see this season of life with appreciation. The feeling of gratefulness expands my perspective and opens me up to new ways to live happily, to experience fullness of joy and of peace. The more I pay attention to what's already working in my life, the better it gets. I'm grateful, I'm thankful for the universe and all the blessings in my life. I'm grateful for those who have helped me on my journey. I am thankful for myself. I'm forever grateful, I'm forever thankful. As I walk through life, may my stride be graceful. As I see the blessings hidden in every message. As I live and I learn, grateful for every lesson. I am peace, I am love. I am joy, I am light. Each day I give gratitude for my life. I am forever grateful. I am forever thankful. As I walk through life, may my stride be graceful. All I have right now is this moment. And this moment is enough. I am enough. For that I am grateful. I'm grateful for this version of me. I refuse to take it for granted. I refuse to take any single day for granted. I will embrace them all with a sense of gratitude. I accept both my burdens and my blessings. I see the beauty in them both. I will learn from them both. I will create from them both. I see all existence. I see every moment. I see every day as an opportunity to be greater than I've ever been. I'm forever grateful. I'm forever thankful as I walk through life. May my stride be graceful as I see the blessings hidden in every message. As I live and I learn, grateful for every lesson. I am peace, I am love. I am joy, I am light. Each day I give gratitude for my life. I am forever grateful. I am forever thankful as I walk through life. May my stride be graceful. I'm thankful for the fun, the wealth, and the joy. I am happy and feel fulfilled in this moment. I am excited for what this day will bring. I am grateful for the tremendous opportunities for growth that the universe has placed before me. Even though some days will bring turmoil. I am making a conscious decision to seek peace within my being. I have decided that I will control my emotions. My emotions will not control me. I have decided that I am going to be grateful for the light that I see and the light that I am. 
every day, I have more and more to be grateful for. And every day, I will show my gratitude. I'm forever grateful. I'm forever thankful. As I walk through life, may my stride be graceful. As I see the blessings hidden in every message. As I live and I learn, grateful for every lesson. I am peace, I am love. I am joy, I am light. Each day I give gratitude for my life. I am forever grateful. I am forever thankful. As I walk through life, may my stride be graceful.